start recording. The first thing we'll do today is, um, well, I guess the application of uh, Avogadro's law, but like I said, I'm going to break it down with this PV equals NRT thing, okay? So, PV equals NRT is the ideal gas law, okay? So, just, okay? And, um, P stands for pressure, as you might imagine. B stands for volume. N stands for number of moles. And T stands for temperature, right? Um, R is what's called the universal gas constant, and it's a constant, okay? So it stays the same, no matter what problem it is, okay? It's in fact 0 0.0821 liters um, ATM over moles Kelvin, okay? But it's something that'll be given to you so you don't have to memorize it, okay? But anyways, whenever you're doing one of these gas law problems, I want you to write down PV equals NRT, and then write little ones, or if you like initial, you can write little I's below them. And then I want you to divide both sides by PV equals NRT, okay? Like that. And put little twos below those. Okay? Or F's, if you prefer that. Notice I didn't put anything below the R. Why is that? It's a constant. It doesn't change, right? So what am I going to do with it? I'm going to cancel it out, right? It's just like 2 divided by 2 equals what? 1, right? So anything divided by itself equals what? 1, right? So R divided by R equals one, yeah, very good. Everybody else can answer too, you know? I know you guys know that stuff. So we just divide those up, okay? So those are all gone. Okay, so our equation now essentially is P1V1 over P2V2 equals N1T1 over N, N2T2. Is everybody cool with that? Okay, so the next thing we're going to do now is look at our problem, okay? Our problem says, if 5.5 moles of carbon monoxide occupy 20.6 liters, how many liters will 16.5 moles of carbon monoxide occupy at the same temperature and pressure? Okay? So that problem is giving us a lot of information, right? Let's write down in numerical or mathematical terms what the problem is giving us. So can anybody tell me one of the things that the problem is giving us? The, so the initial number of moles it's saying, right? So it says if 5.5 moles of carbon monoxide occupy 20.6 liters, then 16.5 will occupy how many, right? So it's saying the initial moles is 5.5, right? So do you guys remember moles is n? Okay, so let's just write that. And again, a lot of people like I. I like ones, you know, I don't know why. But anyways, N equals, N1 equals 5.50 moles. And you got to remember that zero because it's significant, okay? What else did it give us? Volume. volume. Initial, right? It gave us the volume initial, right? And what was that? 20.6. Thanks, guys. So <coughs> kind of scoot over there, especially when you're tall and there's a TV in the What else does it give us? Yeah, another mole. So what happens if I change the number of moles, right? That's what it's saying. So it's N2, like that, okay? And what was that? 16.5 moles. And is, what else? Does it give us anything else? No, but it asks us something, right? It says, how many liters, right? So it's asking us for what? V2, V2, that's what it's asking us for. But it also tells us something else, right? So, yeah, it says that the, the pressure and temperature are the same, right? So that means they've stayed the same, right? So if pressure is, I don't know, two before and two after, it's going to cancel out. So what does it mean? P1 equals P2, right? So we can cancel those out. Is that cool? What did it say? Temperature, too, right? We're doing all the others. <laughs> temperature um, remains the same, too, right? So T1 equals T2, right? So we can cancel those out, too. Is everybody cool with that? Is 
So now our equation breaks down to this, right? V1, V2 equals N1 over N2, like that. And we've got all of that information, right, except for V2. So all we got to do is isolate that variable. You guys remember algebra, how to isolate the variable? We'll do it, okay? Let's do it together, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do, I like, if it's in the denominator, I like to just flip the whole thing over, okay? So if I flip this side over, I've got to flip that side over, right? So my new equation is V2, V1 equals N2, N1. Is everybody okay with that? It's okay? Yeah. You can do that, right? Or you can do all of that if you want to, which we're about to do with V1, right? So, is V2 isolated? Isolated being by itself? No, it's not. We've got to get V1 out of there, right? So how do we get V1 out of there? Multiply by V1, right? Both sides, because of course, what you do to one side, you've got to do to the other side, right? Cancel, cancel. And our new equation is V2 equals N2 V1 over N1. And do you have all of that stuff? Yep, plug and chug. Right? So, N2, 16.5 moles. Um, where are we? V1, 20.6 liters divided by um, N1, 5.50 moles. Cool thing about it, doing it this way, right, is you can cancel out your units, and you're going to get units of liters, of course, right? And is liters good units for volume? Yes, yes. it's great volume volume units. Okay, so all we got to do is plug into our calculator now. So 16.5, okay, 20.6 divided by 5.5. Yeah, and so what did you guys get? 61.8. 61.8. And, of course, that's what the calculator gives you, but if, even if it gave you more digits than that, you would have to cut it to that, because all of these have three sig figures. Is everybody cool with that? Cool. So, and box your answer, just so you can say, that's it. Okay? So, are there any questions on this? So, the thing is, is actually, what you find is this is Avogadro's Law. Here. And you can do all of these, Charles' Law, all of these, from just by canceling out the things that are the same, okay? So all you gotta remember is this PV equals NRT. We'll do a lot of these today, and I'll prove to you that's the case, okay? Really cool.